And so I'm the outreach coordinator for MFS US, and I support all the, I like to call them the onesies and twosies across the United States. And um, those are families that live in locations where there's not an, a military family service coordinator uh, stationed in their state. Uh, myself, along with Stephanie Murphy, Stephanie Murphy is the MFS US Tinker uh, Coordinator in Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City. And so we spearhead, spearheaded uh, this program, um, and our goal is to provide a platform uh, where Canadian Armed Forces families, like you all, uh, can share information on topics and resources that are relevant to living out CAN. And the topic today that was chosen uh, by some families, we had to put a poll out and have uh, sent emails and Facebook requests on what topics families would like to talk about, and this was one of them. So how to support our kids while living out CAN. So we're going to have a conversation around stress, anxieties, what can, tri like what can trigger some of these things, uh, what are some of your best practices in supporting your children in your stressful times. And we are so fortunate and very, very excited because uh, we have our uh, social worker, Melissa Rayner, who's on the line and who's going to do a little presentation for us. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Melissa Rayner. She's the outreach social worker. And I guess we'll pass the ball, Joanna, over to Melissa. Does she? Perfect. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Melissa. Everybody can hear me. Melissa, do you want do you want to advance your own slides, or do you want me to do that for you? Oh, I can advance my own slides. That works. Okay. All Perfect. right. That's Thank you. Ball. You're welcome. So, um, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, for being here today. Um, Actually, I'm very happy to join all of you today to talk about this topic on how to support your children on an OutCan posting. Um, when Tammy approached me to host this live online session, um, I was happy as I really think this is a great topic uh, that touches many, many families across the states. And um, I mean, it can be challenging for many children to transition to a new country and um, as challenging for parents to see their children struggling throughout uh, this unique posting. So um, to be able to have this platform to share some of your stories and experiences and, and talk about some tips as well and tools on how to better uh, support your children is fantastic. So um, please remember, like uh, Tammy just mentioned, uh, it will be recorded, but uh, we understand that some of you may share some personal experiences, and this is why the recording won't be available for uh, at large, so on our website or anything. It's only uh, people requesting the recording uh, who will uh, have access to it. So um, I'd like to mention that uh, today's session is really about sharing each other's experiences. I'll be guiding the conversation with a few key questions and tips but um, I really encourage you all to share your own stories, uh, just like you would do at a regular coffee time with other spouses. Uh, I could talk for the whole time, um, but uh, I truly believe that we can learn uh, way more by sharing uh, and hearing other people's experiences. So please feel free to participate at any given time. Uh, this is really a safe space for it. And uh, so you can unmute yourself and talk, or if you feel more comfortable, you can, uh, on the, with the chat box, you can just type it in, and uh, Tammy and Joanna will um, look in the chat box to uh, tell anything that is mentioned there. Um, so uh, also, I wanted to mention that it can bring a lot of emotions to talk about our children's difficulties, right? And uh, sometimes we can feel the need to talk to someone. So if it's the case for you after the presentation, um, please note that I'm available for you. Uh, I will be giving my contact information uh, at the end of uh, the presentation. Um, so just before we get started, um, I thought maybe we could all introduce ourselves by telling where we live, how many children we have, um, uh, how old they are, and uh, I, I'd be curious to know why, why you're interested in today's session, so basically what brought you here today. Um, the simple fact of having children and living out can might be the reason, but uh, if there's anything specific, I'd like to hear about it. Um, so maybe I can start. My name is Melissa. I'm the uh, your MFS US Outreach uh, Social Worker, and I offer virtual mental health uh, support 
through um, supportive counseling to all CAF families who are posted to the U.S. Um, this is a pretty new service that is available to all uh, of you families. And uh, I work out of the MFRC in Yellowknife, where my family is posted. We're, uh, we're completing our fourth year here in Yellowknife. Um, very cold, <laughs> probably way cold than what you're, <laughs> the weather you, 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 uh, you folks have. And uh, I have two young children, so my daughter is four and my son is two. So, um, yeah, very busy house with two toddlers, and I'm sure uh, many of you can relate to that. So uh, that's pretty much it for me. Who else would like to, um, to introduce themselves? I can go next. It's Brenda. Hi, um, Brenda. <laughs> are you, Melissa? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Um, I, uh, for those of you who don't already know me, I'm the MFS coordinator here in Washington, D.C. We've been down here this is our third year because we got a tag along posting, um, a crossover posting. Um, so we'll get two actual postings down here. And it's our fourth out can. Um, so, and I have three children. Uh, most of them are not children anymore. I have one in her third year of McGill University, one who graduated from U.S. high school last year and is attending Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, and then I have a third who is in grade 11 here in a U.S. high school. Um, and I'm interested in today's session just um, partially for work, but also partially um, I'm still supporting kids on both or in two different places, three different places actually, and uh, they still need help even when they're teens and adults. Oh yeah, absolutely, and the distance can be part of the of the challenge too. To be mm -hmm. away. From. I can I can also share uh, one of my children. My son had a really difficult time with the outcan posting, and uh, he uh, he's. He's doing great now, he's sitting in university, but it was a rough couple of years uh, for him and obviously for us supporting him. And mm -hmm. so they're all very different though because my daughter just loves it here. So mm -hmm. two different experiences. Right, well thank you so much, Brenda. No problem. I can go next. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Cynthia and we're in San Diego. I have two kids, Reese who is six and Riley who is Three. So I think my challenges are maybe a little bit different than those with older kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just here to kind of hear what everybody else's experience has been and, you know, how to deal with the big emotions that come up, especially in uh, the little kids. Right. And how, are you, how long have you been in San Diego, Cynthia? Uh, we're halfway through. So we've been here about a year and a half. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank you. I can go next. I mean, uh, most of you on the line, as I did the introduction, uh, let you know that I work for MFS US Outreach. Um, some of you may not know. I know the staff that are online do know. <laughs> so I'm a mom of six. Uh, so my youngest is 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, and a 24 year old. Um, I currently live in Victoria. I moved from San Diego. Uh, Cynthia's family, actually, the Vaughn family. Uh, transition in as we were transitioning out to Canada. So we went through a huge transition uh, with uh, our children. Uh, four, it was their very first transition uh, out of the United States because I adopted four while I was there. And so that was a huge transition. And we're still transitioning uh, in here, or sorry, in Canada. Uh, so that was, uh, I guess, uh, something I would like to hear uh, some other families maybe have experienced that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, you know why I'm interested in today's session is something, as it said, families that they want to hear about and uh, learn new resources to share with some of the new families that are uh, moving in and, and some of our current families. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tenny. This is Tracy. I can go now if you want. I don't mm -hmm. know who, I think there's only one of us left or two. Um, my name is Tracy Zanel. I live um, currently in Pensacola, Florida. I have the Air Force training with the Navy here. Um, I have, we have two children. My son is four and a half, named Arthur, and my daughter Holly is two years and just a few months over that. Um, I'm really interested in today's session because we've been here, we were only meant to be here about a year, and we've been here almost two years. 
Mm -hmm. um, next, we're going to Norfolk, Virginia for six months to up to a year and a half. And then after that, we're going to Australia um, for three to five years. So I'm really concerned with, our kids are smart, but I'm just really concerned with how school-wise that will all go. And I'm mm -hmm. finding my job, I work full-time as a scientist, and I have um, no understanding of the best way to reach children, and we're mm -hmm. really learning as we go here. Um, mm -hmm. So we're really worried about how school years merge in Norfolk right now. We're worried because there's no full-day kindergarten. And so it, we're, we're really sort of struggling to sort of figure out what's best for our kids and making the right decisions and making sure that their academics aren't affected. Um, socially and mentally, we're kind of happy being in the U.S. because we think that the support systems here are a bit stronger. Um, there's lots mm -hmm. of apps and little things that Fleet and Family does. So I think we're a little concerned about what that will be like later. Um, so we're just a bit like, you know, just worried parents and how to make make the best decisions. Right. But um, Especially with that many transitions that, that will happen uh, for, you, for, for your family. Yeah, so we're just, yeah, we just don't know a lot about the school systems and stuff and the resources, mm -hmm. and we've kind of been, I think Tammy knows a bit about us, or one of the other ladies on the phone, we've been kind of forgotten a bit about it down here, so we're right. just trying to figure out how to mm -hmm. make the best next move better, and obviously when my son leaves this beautiful little school that we magically found here, we're a little worried about how that mm -hmm. will go, if there's right. going to be any learning or emotional components that we could learn from other people on this call or any guidance that mm -hmm. people have for us. Well, thank you so much for sharing, uh, Tracy. Okay, and then I think we have... Guys, it's Ramona Moore speaking. Um, so we're currently in Ottawa, and we're on our way down to Tampa um, towards the end of this school year. We've got three girls, uh, two of the older girls are in second year, post-secondary, so they're going to be staying behind in Canada. Um, so we've got that to kind of deal with. And then we've got our youngest daughter who's going to be going into grade 12 in September or August, I guess, in Florida. So it's just kind of trying to understand how to navigate the school system down there and make sure that she's kind of lined up. Uh, with all the courses that she needs to be able to graduate after that one year in Florida. Perfect, yeah. And uh, I see uh, Brenda just mentioned in the chat box that um, lots of support uh, in D.C. Um, for Tracy to give her uh, a call anytime. So uh, it's good. It's a good way, right, to connect here with the live online session uh, to connect with other families across the state. So uh, thank you so much, everybody, to introduce yourselves. Thank you, uh, Brenda, Cynthia, Ramona, Tammy, Tracy, and um, thanks, Joanna, as well. So um, maybe I can go to the next slide. So um, Tammy just mentioned a little bit about it, you know, what the goals are. Uh, so today's session is really uh, to have a conversation on how to support your children uh, during an OutCan posting. Um, it's also to share with others your experiences uh, and to share with others those tips and resources that you've been using and that you have found helpful. Um, so we have um, Spouse, we have parents with um, different uh, ages of ch children with different ages, so it's great to be able to uh, to connect with each other and and share what tips and and, and things that you have tried and that was uh, that that were helpful. So um, hopefully by the end of the session, uh, you'll feel more confident in your capacities and in supporting your children and the uniqueness of a uh, of an outcan posting and. Um, yeah, I think it's really amazing to have this technology and be able to host uh, virtual sessions. It's uh, it's pretty neat. So um, the next, uh, the first question actually that I have for you, it's um, it's the biggest challenge that you have been dealing with in your past posting or even in your current posting. I'm sure some of you have experienced challenges uh, with your children since you've moved up to the states. 
and um, maybe you, you, you've experienced these challenges in Canada as well, but uh, you're, you, may have, you may find it a little bit harder now that you're further from home or uh, not fully aware of the resources you have access to as a CAF family in the U.S. or, or have a hard time to, uh, to access the actual resources. So, um, so yeah, let's just get started by talking about your child's biggest challenge in your current posting. Um, I named here a few examples, um, and it's really only a few examples. There, there might be others. Um, some can be related to, to, to the move uh, that uh, some of you have experienced not too long ago. Uh, so I wrote here bullying, um, have a, having a hard time to make new friends, um, having issues uh, transitioning to a new school, um, being uh, distanced from friends and family. This, is, this can be a, a hard one even for parents, right? And um, for some family, it can be the language, the language barrier, um, anxiety, self-harm, uh, suicidal thoughts, some behavior issues. So um, yeah, I, I would invite uh, you to uh, just share by unmuting yourself like you just did to introduce yourself, uh, to tell us uh, what are the biggest challenges. And, and uh, if you feel more comfortable, you can write in the chat box as well. Do you want to go ahead, Brenda? Sure, I, I can just start. So as I was saying, it was a difficult transition for one of my children. And I think it was just, it was a really bad soup of a whole bunch of things happening at once, leaving a girlfriend behind, coming in in an election year and having a huge um, bipolar culture here and, you know, for a gentle soul moving from Comox, BC to a really high stress type A community of um, polarized political opinions. And then on top of that, the school is really, really intense here. And so going from, you know, 95s in math to failing in math and all of that all kind of mashed in together to a nasty soup mm -hmm. and um, the result was of course he kind of you know didn't didn't do very well for the first couple of years well he was only here for two years so it it made it very difficult for him um, so um, yeah and as I said whereas my daughter transitioned and was fine she found friends and had no issues with school and, and moved right in and was happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so many things happen at the same time for your for your son, right? The fact to, to, to leave his girlfriend behind, that, that's a big one too. And, and just the, the, the difference in the intensity of school, that's that causes a lot of anxiety and, and, and just the pressure is hard to handle for for many children, so. And I think the culture here too, it's very different in that there's no time to make friends. Mm. They're either, you know, going to school or they're doing three and a half to four hours of football practice or they're, you know, where it's competitive. It's not just getting in there and making friends and having fun. It's about being the best. And, mm -hmm. and so it, it was a very, um, you know, difficult mix for sure. Mm, I no doubt, and and like you mentioned, some children might fit well in this kind of culture, but some don't. So it's it, it can be every situation is different. Every children is different, right? That's correct. Mm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Brenda. No problem. Anybody else would like to share? Um, I will. So my son Reese didn't really have big issues transitioning. Both of them were amazing. It's like they woke up in our new house and everything was completely fine and normal. But now that we're halfway through our posting and we're starting to talk about, you know, potentially what's next, um, he's already starting to have, um, I guess, a lot of sadness mm -hmm. about leaving the friends he's made here. Right. And it's very different because he was he had just turned five um, when we moved here, and he had he had had friends since he was a baby, like literally the same group of friends. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that didn't really seem to bother him a ton. But now that we're six and a half, almost seven, it's just, I don't know, he has some, some really big emotions about leaving friends behind this time. Right. And for, and, and I mean, to, uh, to, to be able to, to keep, to leave to leave these friends and to to say goodbye can be so hard for these little ones, right? And and to anticipate that, yeah, I bet it, it's it's not easy at all. Mm-hmm. But it's good though that you, you you start to talk about the the, the what's next and and, and it's kind of prevent being preventive uh, with your children. Yeah, I don't want it to be like okay, we're moving next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> devastate him I know it yeah so we talk about it and we you know if he cries he cries if you know whatever he needs to do yeah and uh, absolutely support him through it yeah thank you so much Cynthia and and these are things we'll be talking about later on about you know how to uh, how to have these chats with our children and 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 how to 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 connect with them, to, to, to talk about the, their, their emotions that they're going through. Anybody else would like to, uh, to share? Hey there. So I'll share um, a couple of my, my middle schoolers, actually. It was, uh, we transitioned many times uh, with, with two of my children. And as I said, four of my children, it was their very first time being out of the country or even transitioning. Uh, to the extent that it was. And so the transition uh, from California, my my four had never left California and all they knew was California and the climate in San Diego where they had, live in, had lived. And so that was a huge shock moving to Victoria, uh, Canada, coming to the culture shock of Canada and the culture shock of French because uh, they, ha- they had to have French uh, in their, uh, going into their grade eight. And also, uh, some of the food tastes different back in Canada, which they hadn't, which we know back in the United States, the Canadians coming in, there's some culture shock there. Um, sporting events was another big one uh, here, which was kind of interesting to see that the children uh, found the sporting events more competitive here in Victoria than San Diego. Hard to imagine. I think it was just in the, the leagues that they were in in San Diego, one of them being hockey. Uh, hockey here was obviously uh, in Victoria was a little bit more than it was in San Diego for them. Um, so those are some things, uh, very sad. Uh, I had some very, very, first it was very, very excited uh, middle schoolers to be going to Canada and their new experience. But then after uh, about a year uh, now, um, some sadness has, start, has come in and um, just sort of that missing, you know, some of those things um, in that climate. So those are some things that we've experienced. Um, Again. Yeah, and, and and with 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 as many children too, it might be uh, might be challenging for as a parent to be dealing with with uh, with every emotions coming from all of these children. Is there anybody else who would like to share the biggest challenge that their child has? I think, I think, this is Tracy, I think one of the biggest things, and I think about all of, I look at this list, and my kids are younger, so obviously mm-hmm. it's, it's harder to realize what the issues really are at their age, because they're so young, like, like my two-year-old, how can I really know what issue it is? It's very, very, very difficult to break it down, is probably one of the big things, and then my son, is, he does have a lot of anxiety and, and nervousness that we see, but we're not sure if that's just a little bit of his introverted personality. He's only four and a half, so we're really getting to know who he is to even know which one of these is an issue. But I think one of the biggest challenges that our kids face is having their parents go through managing and dealing with the move and us trying to be the best parents we can during that stressful time. I think that's when I think about what my husband and I have gone through and how we've tried to be the best people people we could, let alone even parents, during Mm -hmm. that stress and anxiety of dealing with paperwork and things like that. I think helping the parents keep their cool (laughs) to help them be better parents is probably one of the biggest challenges that the kids face where if mom and dad are bickering or arguing or trying to sort too many things out at once or stepping over pieces of toys when the boxes are everywhere. So I think those are probably 
the biggest challenges we face with our kids at our age, just for us trying to be, um, you know, keep our patients and keep our cool, which obviously that's not their fault, but that's life and that's the nature of what's probably the biggest stresses are in our house, um, us keeping well to keep them well and make sure that, you know, things like that, I think is the biggest thing that we've seen it with our kids our age at this point. Yeah, you're so right, Tracy. When they're such as a young age, you know, under five, it's hard to, to, to identify what what's normal, what is healthy in their development, and what is really, it, it, it's really some, something they're struggling with. So, um, yeah, especially at a young age, can be, it can be a little bit more difficult as a parent. And you're right about the fact that... Um, just stay, stay cool, stay calm as a parent while you're going through all these stresses is a big challenge it's itself. So um, definitely you mark a very good point. I agree. Yeah, and like with, with my daughter, like she, for example, after 3.30 meshes with kids of all ages and they were, she's a cute little blonde, two years old, tiny. So they were carrying her around like a doll. So dealing with that, she wasn't getting bullied, but she was getting mistreated and she's too little. Mm -hmm. So dealing with things like that has been something that, but that could have been happening in Canada. I don't think that's necessarily U.S. related. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but just things like that. Um, I don't want what, when my husband or I are going through all this massive paperwork and, and the issues and problems and full-time jobs and stressors to, um, to us to teach those teach our kids that anxiety or stress we don't want to teach them that behavior and just really managing mm -hmm. that so that doesn't become part of them which i don't really want that to be part of them yeah we do our best so these things don't impact our children but it can be uh, it can be very challenging uh, and um i just i just want to go quickly through the chat box some people have written stuff here so um we have um uh, when you move, it always takes a bit of a bit to build your village, and yeah, that's totally true. And um, we have someone mentioned that um, my older son really struggled making friends as a high schooler moving. Um, yes, teenagers, a eh? like um, how important their friends are. So to move. Uh, you know, once you're 12, uh, between 12 and 17, it's, 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 yeah, it's very difficult. And um, we also have every move we have had, it's been a different one, to, different ones of our children who had transition issues and often not the one we were prepared to give extra support to. Yeah. Sometimes we expect things, but it doesn't really happen like we, like we thought it would. So thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. It's awesome. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, the next slide I have is um, about the successful things that you have tried to support your children. Um, so maybe you have tried stuff, and maybe it worked well. Maybe it didn't work so well. And so let's talk about it. I've wrote a few things here, uh, such as having conversations with our kids might be easier when they're older, not so much when they're two. Um, I also wrote a, a spending quality time with our children. Uh, arts, you know, painting, drawing, coloring. Some children find it really helpful to express themselves through arts, um, extracurricular activities, uh, sports even, um, using social media to stay connected with friends. Um, and family, uh, or Skype and FaceTime, and and sometimes can be hard to find a balance with that. But uh, it's definitely a good tool uh, to use. Um, I also wrote meditation. It can be yoga, um, deep breathing uh, exercises with your children, visual visualization, and there's also reaching out to professionals that can be very helpful. So um. Uh, Again, if you want to share uh, what you've tried so far and what you found helpful, uh, just just so we can, you know, um, share and, and and learn on what other have tried, that would be amazing. 
So I'll, I'll share. Uh, one of the big things that, that's helped for us um, is journaling. Um, so mm -hmm. the children have journals, and I know that sounds quirky and probably cheesy, <laughs> but it actually has been very, very helpful. And so, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to sit and write like pages and pages of what's going on in their life or what their experiences, what the good, bad, or ugly, or those kinds of things are. It could be just a picture that they're going to share of, you know, maybe it's In-N-Out Burger that they love so much, you know, at that time, and what's, what's something similar to In-N-Out Burger in Canada or, you know, the, just little things like that. And so those picture books, um, I shared my diary with, with the children um, that I started when I was 10 years old. And they thought that was pretty cool that my age, I still have this, and I was able to share with mm -hmm. them. And so I just said, why don't you just share the journal? Because it's a journey that you're on. And this is something you'll be able to explain to your children or your animals or whatever you have <laughs> later in life. Mm -hmm. You don't have children. Or just to get you through um, the time or what you're feeling right now. So that's something um, that has been successful for us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tammy. It's true, putting down on paper your feelings, your thoughts, the, the, the things you've been uh, experiencing, it's, it's, it's really a good way. Anybody else? Stephanie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't um, see you came in. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Yes, I snuck in late. My computer froze. I'm so sorry. I'm late. Don't worry about all. We're happy to have you with us. Oh, I would say that, um, well, with two older kids, like one's now in university, but with teenagers, and throughout the years, I think, um, especially when they're little, and like someone already stated, that the kids, they feed off of the parents. So, um, my husband and I, you know, moving is just stressful in general, whether it's it's just everything all piled on at once. But we always tried to, you know, be in a happy place around our kids and try to really focus on the positive. And with every move, especially for me maybe as a mom, but um, always putting the kids first. So make sure that, you know, we would introduce them to the neighborhood, um, you know, find parks and libraries, fun things to do just to get them acquainted and excited. Mm -hmm. And and that has always really seemed to help. We try not to complain in front of them, you know, as they got older and stuff about, even if it was little things that bothered us, but not not to keep secrets from them, but just to sort of, you know, the, it's just an emotional time. So we just always try to focus on the positive. Yeah, I think it's a really good, uh, a really good advice and a really good uh, state of mind to have, to stay positive around our children and, and, and that, that teaches them a lot to to, to keep to keep, to see the positive side of stuff, and and, and it's also uh, it also helps them building their resilience as well, even though they're going through a hard time with with a transition, for example. So definitely, thanks, Stephanie. Thanks. Oh, this is Tracy. I one thing we got off the wonderful Amazon.com is a rug for the formal dining room slash playroom that is a map of the world. And we talk to them a lot about uh, that they're in, well, my, my four and a half year old gets it a lot more. Like we talk to him about how he lives in America, where grandpa and grandma are. Um, and then we point to Australia and sort of warn him continuously. And mm -hmm. if we vacation anywhere, we sort of like get him to understand where that is. And it's good for to learn geography, but we find that kind of really helps with him. Like he'll like, we, we try and teach him and talk to him all the time about where he's from mostly because he's singing the, the American National Anthem sometimes and he looks kind of confused. But um, so we try and talk to him about the world more than um, maybe someone would if they were living in Canada their whole life. So we talk to him a lot about he's from Canada, where he was born and where he's going, where he lives now and things like that. That's great, Tracy. It's a very good idea. I mean, to be to have the visual, right? And it, it, at the same time, you teach them geography, and, and, and then their story, where they come from, where they'll be moving to. So it's great. I just want to continue on with that. It's Brenda. Um, one of the things that's been successful, not necessarily on this move, just because of how things worked out, but doing research beforehand on 
like for me doing research and like putting the kids in summer camps or something when they get there. Like we used to always do it, you know, as part of the move process, they'd go to a summer camp in our current location. But um, I know when we moved from Ottawa to Comox, we researched and found that there was a tall ships program and they both, uh, my older two loved tall ships. So we put them in that as soon as they got there. And I know with here, we put our daughter in a dance intensive um, right away so she could develop her dance family. Like I said, it didn't necessarily work for our son because he just got completely overwhelmed in football camp, which he wanted to take. Um, but uh, it, it certainly did help before for all of our other moves to do that. And, and like Stephanie said, being really positive and like researching all the fun things that we could do um, and, you know, planning some trips, um, you know, for Thanksgiving weekend or something like that so that they can really get to see the area. Mm -hmm. um, I know specifically with our son this time, um, he really needed to get away and so you know even if it was just a weekend at an Airbnb somewhere else that helped um, also you know just lots of talking lots of very very late nights <laughs> and mm -hmm. lots of talking and then um, and, and reaching out to professionals as well just to to um, see where we could support him the most and uh, so Sometimes, sometimes the the things work, and sometimes you just have to say, "This is above my head," mm -hmm. and that's that's what we did. So, Please. yeah. And and one thing, like with the schooling, especially down here in in the United States, um, with the tutoring, getting that set up quickly helped mm -hmm. um, in school because. Uh, obviously the curriculum, there, there are curriculum differences and it's something, especially Ramona, I'm thinking of you moving down in grade 12, you almost want to have a handle on it before you get down here just in case it's necessary because by the time you start getting your three quotes and get it all sorted out, it can be, you know, four, week, four months down the road and almost too late. So being preemptive on any kind of school stuff, I think, really would help. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, so when we come down, um, hopefully in April, to do our house hunting trip, we're going to bring her with us. Oh, that's a great idea. And, you know, sit down. I've already called the school that we think we're going to put her in, so we're going to bring her with us and, and sit down and discuss what the options are for her, the mm -hmm. and what that looks like, and if there are any gaps, how do we make them up, or what's the best route? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's there are lots and, and it's not just in the older kids, the younger kids as well. Like we've had um some families here who have preschool aged kids who have been told that their children have learning disabilities when in reality it's just they play in a different environment in Canada than they do in the US. So kind of being aware that those differences are there and, and also standing being able to stand your ground and say, Look, my kid is two. <laughs> Yeah. Let's just back off a little bit. So <laughs> I see someone saying, yes, that was us. Cynthia, did you have that experience? Uh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> when we started kindergarten, um, he was quite behind all of his classmates because school school starts at three here. Like, let's be honest, it, it really does. Like, mm -hmm. preschool is so important to everybody that most kids do go to actual preschool and start, you know, writing and colors and, you know, in a school format at such a young age that by the time they go to kindergarten, they know the routine, they know what to expect. So it's an easy transition for them. And when my son had um, issues transitioning into school, um, you know, there was all these red flags and, well, you know, we need to have them assessed maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something more going on. And we went, you know, we went through all the assessments because, you know, it wasn't any money out of our pocket and the school was willing to do it. And, you know, he was pretty fine doing it. And it just, this year in grade one, um, we just had our parent teacher conference this week and he's already met or exceeded goals for the class this year. Yeah, it's, it's true. And 
Uh, just another outcan, we did an outcan in the UK and our kids were little at that point. We had one that was just going into kindergarten and one that was in grade four, I think at that point. And same thing, like when we got there, they put my kindergartner in like a remedial class for math, but by the end of the year she was doing, she was a kindergartner and she was doing long division and multiplication. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily her, it's just what she had been exposed to beforehand. And Tammy just mentioned too in the chat box that she experienced that with her uh, grade four student who had done French immersion in Canada. Uh, and so he's reading and writing for grade four in English in San Diego. So they thought he had a disability. And in fact, it, it, this is common with our friends in French, in French immersion. So now he's excelling in, in his grade eight. So it's true, those are things to consider, right? The, the, the differences in, in the school culture, the curriculum, and yeah, definitely. And um, someone else also mentioned, you know, in the things that, uh, to, to support their children, to, um, to uh, go to see a social worker or a counselor uh, as a family for the first few months after uh, their son moves back in with them. Uh, so that's a very good idea uh, to, to be able to, uh, to connect with each other in a safe environment with a with a a neutral person, yep, absolutely a good uh, thing to do. Is there anybody else? Uh, I'm, our, our son wasn't even eligible for half day junior kindergarten here, um, according to Florida, and Canada paid for him to go to more like a learning sort of preschool with like the and when we stuffed him in the Florida JK, and he was pretty much the smartest kid in the class, too little to even be there, and now I think he's bored. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do we navigate, like they're saying he's not listening and stuff, and I think it's just, we we just think it's because he's a bit bored, like they're just repeating the same letters over and over that he's known for two years. Um, how, how do we know with this private and public stuff, is there more of an understanding, like, I think my thing is, and this is me being completely separated from the Canadian curriculum and even, like, the provincial curriculum, like, how do I know that he's getting apples, as apples as possible when he's in these different states or different places for education standards? Like, I know he would be entitled to what he'd be entitled to in Canada, but how do I know, and I know they're doing a little bit of an assessment with that group, which doesn't, how do we really know that our kids are getting as good as they can. Right, yes, it's true. It's a very good question and it can be so challenging. And um, I don't know if any, uh, any, any, anybody in this group has uh, reached out to uh, children's education management in the past and have found uh, their resources helpful for this kind of situation. So um, we're actually um, looking for Riley right now because she'll turn four this summer, so she's eligible um, for that starting in September. Mm -hmm. And the most challenging part of the team is trying to figure out what the curriculum needs to be. Because each like school or daycare has a totally different curriculum. So mm -hmm. that's something that the education people are really missing is like a clear definitive guideline for you know these are you know the, the things they need to be able to do before the end of that year mm -hmm. yeah my my best guide i have is books from costco in canada that have the canadian curriculum for like kindergarten grade one grade two and i just kind of flick through them and i'm like i think we're kind of doing things within this realm, but I found the same thing. We talked to that group and I'm actually trying to talk to them right now because I'm a little scared of Virginia in terms of half-day kindergarten, um, uh, which kind of shocked me. Um, so I'm not sure. And when we had went through the process here, it was just a small letter and they took a quick look at the website. Like there wasn't really any in, like in-depth review of mm -hmm. the learning plan or anything like that. So I feel like that's kind of been put on the members to look that stuff up. And I found that to be a little 
that's, that's a lot with everything else on top. Yes, um, it's a lot. It, it is a lot, and we want to put our children into success. We want them to succeed. We don't want them to fail, and we don't want them to be bored either at, at school. And so um, to, 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 to navigate through the school systems can definitely be a, a big challenge uh, as a parent. And so um, uh, definitely check that out, uh, the children education management. I, I, there will be some slides uh, on resources available at the end of the presentation. Um, uh, so um, some of you can ch take a look at that. Um, I'm just looking at the chat box. There's anything that we're missing. Oh, it's all already 10 to 1. So much great conversation, ladies. That's awesome. Um, Tammy, do we usually have an hour? Yes, we do. Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll go. Qu we'll quickly go through uh, the next uh, the next slides, okay. which is how to support my child. Right. So basically, I've put there a few points um, that I thought were important, and um, maybe this PowerPoint can be sent out afterwards. Um, so uh, the first one. Uh, that I think is really important is to um, pay attention to your child's signs and symptoms that, you know, there might be something that is wrong with them. Um, so here I put, you know, a few, uh, a few points uh, that you can look at. And maybe by when you read it, you can see uh, some of the things that you've already seen in your children. Um, you know, they, they're usually pretty good at giving us some signs that something's wrong. And as parents, we're, we tend to be pretty good at knowing uh, our children's personalities and behaviors and habits, um, which means that, you know, when changes appear, our radar can, radar can catch them more easily than other people who don't have that relationship with them. So I think it's also important to trust uh, our instinct as parents as well. Um, so for some children, you can see some changes in their behaviors, uh, in their feelings and thoughts. Uh, you can sometimes see uh, physical changes as well. Um, so if, when you think about uh, think, it, it changes in their thinking, it can be uh, children having really neg saying negative things about themselves. They can have trouble concentrating. Uh, you can see it, changes in their school performance as well. Uh, when it's more around their reactions and feelings, you can see that they seem a little bit more uh, unhappy, worried, um, irritable, sad, or angry. Uh, some of them feel uh, helpless, hopeless, and, and very lonely. In terms of behaviors, uh, you can see children, you know, wanting to be alone way more often than usual. Some of them can cry very easily or show, show less interest in stuff that they, that they usually enjoy doing, such as sports or uh, any games or activities that they usually enjoy doing. Some of them can have behavioral issues, so such as, you know, hitting, kicking, biting, uh, screaming, temper tantrum. That's something we do see a lot more um, in toddlers. That's their way to express themselves, that something's going on. Um, you can also see changes in their sleep. Uh, you can also see uh, children falling back to less mature behaviors, uh, having trouble getting along with friends. Um, some physical changes can appear as well. Um, I see here on the chat box stomach aches. That's a, that's a real one too. Uh, headaches, um, changes in their appetites. They gain weight or they lose weight. Those are signs as well. Um, some of them can have a lot of energy <laughs> as well or having nervous habits such as uh, thumb sucking, nail biting, hair twisting. Um, so uh, it's definitely to keep an eye on these changes that you can see in your children. And, and I can't remember who mentioned it, but sometimes it can be hard to... Uh, to, to identify is it something that is part of their uh, healthy development or is it, is it a real sign that something is going wrong? Um, 
you can definitely reach out to someone who uh, knows well children, such as a, a, a counselor, a pediatrician. Don't 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 be afraid to reach out to these professionals to help you uh, figuring out um, if uh, it's something that needs uh, further uh, assessment uh, for. Uh, here I've put you know a few questions that you can ask yourself uh, in, in in order to 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 decide if your child needs a professional help. Um, how often do these uh, behaviors happen? Uh, are these behaviors outside the typical range for 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 their age? And that's when you want to talk to professionals uh, to see if it's normal or not. And how long uh, has it been going on for? Uh, has it been going on for a few days, a few weeks, months? Um, how much are they interfering with their with your child your child's life? Does it have an impact at school, with his friends, with you uh, as a parent, with his siblings, um, in his activities? Those are really good signs uh, to uh, to help you identify. Oh, there might be something going on. Uh, with my child. Um, here, there's also the next step would be to uh, to give your child a space to express uh, herself and by listening and respecting uh, her feelings. Um, and it's really a matter of having an open dialogue with your children. Sometimes it can be harder when they are younger. Um, and, and, and if it's the case, just to to uh, to label the feeling that uh, you can see. Uh, so, oh, you seem sad. Uh, uh, am I correct? You know, and find ways together to um, to, to to feel better. And and if sometimes some parents feel very comfortable having that kind of discussion with their children, but some other parents might find that a little bit more difficult. And it's the same for kids. Some kids might be very comfortable sharing with their parents their feelings, but for some others, mm, not so much. So it, it can be just to sit together to mention your observations, your concerns, and help your child find finding, uh, someone to talk to or suggest even professional help. Um, so I think this is one of the a big step to, to in supporting your children uh, to, uh, to 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 give them the space uh, to uh, to express their feelings and 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 to notice the changes. And take the time to check in with them are uh, are also important. Um, I also put to involve your child in the problem solving. Um, I think as parents sometimes we we feel like we need to have a solution to everything. Am I am I correct? Um, I mean, well, it's my case sometimes to be honest and. Uh, I think it can be super surprising how children can be creative in finding a uh, solution to their problems. Uh, I mean, it can be hard to not take over as parents, but by giving them the chance to find their own solution, it will help them building their self-esteem and, and even their self-confidence. And so sometimes it can be hard for them to find a solution. Uh, sometimes you, you, you will need, you know, to help them out, uh, to guide them in finding the, the, the best way to help them out. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, you can brainstorm with them uh, the solutions. And um, you can also teach them some, some, some coping strategies. Uh, it could be deep breathing, meditation. There are there are so great apps available, or even on YouTube, um, stretching, yoga, um, calming activities. You know that they like to do, or even going outside for a walk. Um, I see here in the chat box, um, car rides are great times for kids to open up. So true, Brenda. Uh, you know when you pick them up from school. Uh, that's such a good idea. Even just driving them to school instead of putting them on the bus can make a difference, especially for teens. Yes, thank you so much, Brenda. So true. Um, around the dinner table, um, you know, to have those those quality times with with your children can be great opportunities to 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 have a conversation with them. 
Um, I see in the chat box Tammy mentioning date night with kids or teens where it is just one-on-one -on -one and doing things they would like to do and you have time to enjoy the event with them. Thank you so much. I'm going very fast right now. I didn't expect it to be um, that we would share as much. Thank you so much. And then I also have um, uh, to use the resources that are available uh, in your community and, and with the, the with MFSUS as well. I'll, I'll I have a few slides for that. Um, Anybody wants to share something about uh, how to support their children, things that they've been doing and what we I just mentioned? Yes, Tammy, we're an engaged group and I love that. Okay, so I'll just pass to the next slide. And these are things we, 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 we mentioned earlier. Remember, uh, Stephanie mentioning, you know, um, uh, help your child build strong and caring relationships. You know, once you moved in to to, to have play dates, uh, being able to to um, create opportunities for them to meet children their age, uh, summer camps, stuff like that, to to make sure that you help your child develop their self esteem will be will be such a good skill for them for their resilience and and for 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 later on in their life. Create a safe and positive home environment for your child. And take care of yourself as a parent, to be a role model. Sometimes it's not easy at all to do that, especially when we're going through uh, so much stress um, as parents. But it is important to think about yourself, to take the time uh, to do uh, things for yourself. Um, by exercising, by going out with friends, by making time for things that you enjoy. And to talk about your feelings as well to your children. And I mean, to show the example that, you know, nobody is perfect. We, 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 mommy too feels sad sometimes, or mommy too feels angry sometimes. And there's other kids too that go through these, these, um, these struggles. It kind of normalizes and 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 is it shows the child that they're not alone in this situation. And 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 I've put here that remember that these challenges will help your child and and your whole family in building resilience. Um, and then next, the resources. Um, I'm sure a lot of the resources that I'll, I'll be talking about uh, are things that you've heard about in the past. But I just wanted to, to remind them because they are great resources. Um, so um, there's CAF Connection, right, our website. And um, there's some great recordings available there. I highly recommend you watch them. Uh, as I mean, you will learn so many helpful stuff out there. Um, there's Children Anxiety available on the website, The Seven Seas of Resilience in Kids, Behaviors Issues in Young Children. Um, so yeah, this is available for you out there. Um, and then there's I just mentioned I mentioned children's education management, and uh, we also have Strongest Families Institute that is uh, available now for uh, CAF families posted to the U.S. Um, before I go uh, further with Strongest Families, and so I just want to share what's written in this chat box. Um, someone's mentioned, I really think being honest about our own struggles and when we may feel nervous about moving lets kids see it's okay and normal and they can watch how we move through those issues in a healthy manner. So true. Thank you for sharing that. And so just to go further uh, with uh, Strongest Families Institute, uh, they offer great programs for families. Um, so we have parents empowering kids for behavior difficulties, so it's for children uh, 3 to 12, 
Um, there's also chase worries away uh, and defeat anxiety, two anxiety programs, one's for 6 to 11 years old and one's for teenagers. And there's also one for adults now that is new, um, which is I can. So it's to conquer anxiety and nervousness. What's great about these program, programs is that it's delivered to families in the comfort of their homes, like we're just doing right now. And um, you get great information through a secure website. Uh, they give you a handbook with tools, uh, videos, audios. Um, families entering the program are paired with a coach, and they have weekly phone calls at a time that works better for each family member involved in the process. So um, if you're interested in any of these programs, uh, you need uh, to assess this through a referral. And for CAF families in the U.S., I'm the one doing the referrals, so um, please feel free to contact me directly and I will be able to give you a little bit more information to see if it's a great fit for you and uh, we'll be able to complete a referral form for you. Um, uh, and then I also put um, the CISMAP, so Canadian Forces Member Assistance Program. That's another great one for our fa military families. Uh, the family information line, you're in the U.S., but you do have access to that line uh, for, for, for parents, for children, and they now offer uh, virtual sessions as well. Uh, so, uh, so emotional, uh, supportive counseling that is available with them. And um, I put Kids Help Phone here. Uh, that is a very great resource for our children. Um, they offer uh, online chat and uh, text, but it's not available, unfortunately, for uh, our kids in the U.S. But the 1-800 the, the number is, well, that's what they've told me, so if, if I'm wrong, please let me know. <laughs> uh, I've reached them out and they, they said there, there's no problem uh, for uh, our Canadian children uh, posted to the U.S. to reach them. Um, there's, there's a crisis text line available in the U.S. and um, it's actually the text line that Kids Help Phone has been inspiring, they, they inspired themselves with that line. And um, I mean with our teenagers, uh, text is, is a very, is a way that the, 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 it's a communication mode that they use a lot. So it can be a very good resource that you can tell them. You know, you can text HOME to 741-741 and uh, a counselor will be available for them. And then uh, the last resources that I wanted to share with you are your amazing Military Family Services Coordinators, your MFSC. Um, these are these people are dedicated for military families. They're there for you, and they'll do whatever they can to help you uh, find the, the best way they can to, 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 to help you experience the best posting you can and, then, and even find resources for you available in your location. And, and then I put my contact information there as well because I'm available for you. Uh, as a spouse, as an individual, as a parent, and I'm also available for your children. And it's a bilingual services a service uh, as well. So, um, yeah, I think I, I've kind of speed up so <laughs> we don't go too much over our time. Um, Tammy mentioned that if you have a family center near your location, they have a great they have great resources also, and. Um, yeah, uh, I think I I think I I pretty much mentioned everything. Here's the references that I that I use that are great for parents as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your sharing and being such an interactive group. I hope uh, it was helpful for you. And um, yeah, looking forward to connecting again with you guys. Excellent, excellent. Applaud! You can see the hands going up there. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you so thank much. you so much, Melissa, uh, for sharing on this great topic. Uh, how can we best support our kids while well, living out CAM? Um, as you can see, we're an engaged group. 
Um, is there anyone uh, that's here on the line um, or any anyone maybe who's going to be listening afterwards? Uh, you can always reach uh, by sending a uh, comment to uh, Melissa with our comments. Our, our sorry, her email is in the PowerPoint here uh, or in the chat. Have any questions for Melissa at this time? I think it's a topic that we could talk about for so long, <laughs> right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you uh, again, Melissa, for, for coming on and sharing. Thank you to the families that have joined. Uh, and thank you, uh, Joanna, for uh, making this available for us to connect like this. So um, with that being said, if no one has any questions uh, to add, you can just, uh, there will be an after session email, so all of you that are on here will receive a, this PowerPoint with all those great resources. Please, 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 I can't reiterate this enough, please reach out to Melissa uh, or your MFSCs, your Military Family Service Coordinators in your location. They will have some up-to-date uh, resources. If they don't have the resources, they will find them for you, so please, uh, Please connect with them. Don't you're not alone. Uh, sometimes it feels like you are. They've all gone through uh, what you're going through, um, and if they haven't, you can share with them, and and you can all uh, go through it together. So thank, thank you, you Tammy. Thank you. Great. So you can just uh, click on the uh, X on the very top 